بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم اینڈ ویلکم ایوری باڈی سو وی آر گوئنگ ٹو اسٹارٹ آر لیکچر نمبر ٹوینٹی سکس اینڈ دیٹ از اباؤٹ دا فورتھ پروسیس آف پروجیکٹ رسک مینجمنٹ اینڈ دیٹ از پرفارم کوانٹیٹیو رسک انالیسز ویل وی ہیڈ اسٹارٹیڈ دس کورس آف ڈیولپمنٹ اینڈ مینجمنٹ آف کمپلیکس پروجیکٹس اینڈ by that time we had discussed that uh, the complex projects uh, are a uh, bit uh, difficult to manage as far as uh, uh, simple projects are concerned in comparison with them those are a bit difficult and uh, why these are difficult because they are having more constraints uh, than um, the simple projects and uh, for uh, Uh, as far as constraints are concerned, for simple projects, the constraint may be as limiting as one constraint or triple constraint or triple constraint with quality concept. But when it comes to complex projects, you you are in mm, need to uh, apprehend and live with more constraints, and one of the constraint is risk. So uh, we had started uh, with the risk concept. Uh, the other day we had talked about the planning of risk management and then identifying risks and then uh, qualitative uh, risk analysis. So now we are going to start with performing quantitative risk analysis. Before we start this uh, lecture, uh, I just want to let you people know there would, would be two sessions on this very important topic, okay? And um, then we will move to other processes. But before we start with this, uh, let's have the summary of the previous lecture. So um, other day we were uh, talking about uh, the assessment of risk. Uh, so how we actually assess the risk. Uh, there are a few characteristics we have identified uh, on which our risk is actually assessed with. Uh, so one of uh, one of the characteristic uh, was uh, um, you know, the probability, and the other the other characteristic which on which the risk is evaluated is the impact, and the impact me you mean the effect on one particular objective of the project. So if uh, we are having this one risk, uh, which is having um, uh, an effect on cost or time or uh, performance, uh, so we will have uh, the risk impact according to that uh, particular objective. So there may be risks which actually uh, are affecting two or more uh, objectives, uh, then you will actually assess the risk for each particular um, objective, and then you will uh, get a comprehensive uh, understanding of uh, total uh, that one risk, okay? So um, after assessment of uh, one risk, basing on the probability and uh, impact, uh, and how you actually assess uh, th uh, those um, things uh, through different uh, data collection techniques uh, like interviews, expert judgment, uh, uh, and Delphi techniques, and we are going to talk a, a lot on that in upcoming slides. And uh, then we had uh, 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 talked about how to actually have the total impact or uh, effect of one risk on total objectives. and. Um, for that, we have also talked about the source of uh, risk. Uh, so what is the source of uh, risk? Um, what is the root cause of the risk? And uh, uh, then uh, what is a root cause? That is uh, one uh, problem is having two or three reasons. And then we, we use this elimination method. And we, we are left with one uh, cause. And then this cause is actually triggered because of two or three causes. And then we use mm, uh, this elimination method. And we eliminate two or three options. And then we are left with one option. Now that is that is a cause which is actually uh, creating the cause and then creating another cause and then is leading to the problem. So that is called root cause. So identifying the source of risk is very important as far as qualitative uh, risk analysis is concerned. Uh, by having this uh, better understanding of uh, the source of risk, mm, we can actually correct that source or we can uh, control that source and uh, hence we can 
uh, eliminate the risk, okay? And uh, most of the time, uh, there are events which are triggering and they are leading towards so many other risks, okay? Uh, like uh, one, or, uh, four or five risks are uh, actually uh, uh, been, um, uh, you know, stemming from one very reason. So if we are eliminating or we are attending that reason, you know, we are uh, actually managing all, all the risks. So before we move fur further in uh, risk management, we should have uh, the source of risk with us. Um, and then uh, we had talked about the application of qualitative risk analysis uh, after the qualitative uh, risk analysis. But before we had moved to that, we had talked about uh, 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 different uh, um, applications or different uh, things we, we use. So one of them was um, uh, impact and probability matrices. Okay, so um, so after uh, by uh, having that uh, matrix available, uh, we can understand uh, which risk is uh, high risk or low risk or medium risk as far as organization is concerned. So um, uh, uh, you use stakeholders um, uh, thresholds or stakeholders um, uh, response uh, to develop those boundaries so and we had talked about how to develop some uh, probability and impact impact metrics for one particular objective or overall project of uh, one um, uh, project okay and uh, then we have assessed our risks based on um, so many other uh, parameters like complexity uh, index uh, or uh, assessment um, you know, risk assessment uh, grade or stuff like that. And then we are having the probability and impact as in subjective terms like high, low, medium, or high, very high, medium, low, very low. Uh, so you, you can have three by three metrics or five by five or even seven by seven, whatever uh, you are uh, uh, having. But the thing is you should uh, use the agreed upon approach and uh, the definition should be very much consistent and uh, every stakeholder should be having the same concept um, on uh, the definitions. So you had developed that uh, matrix. Now put your uh, assessed risk in on that grid and then you will have this uh, ranking of whether which risk is uh, the high risk, which risk is medium risk and which risk is low risk. So um, then uh, by that you may have a list of prioritized risk. So that is the application of qualitative risk analysis. And uh, from there, uh, the highest risk will go for further analysis through quantitative, uh, whereas, whereas um, the risk which actually fall into medium uh, are sent for performing uh, and planning uh, plan uh, response, uh, risk responsing. So, and uh, the one which are left in the bottom, which is the risk is very, very uh, uh, low risk. Uh, so that is actually added into watch list. So there are three uh, probable uh, outputs uh, which this uh, actually analysis gives us, uh, which risk will go to um, uh, quantitative, which risk will go to the um, response planning, and which risk will go to the um, watch list. So, and then we had talked about uh, qualitative risk analysis process, the steps, um, what are the steps, uh, collecting data, analyzing it, uh, def uh, 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 defining the um, uh, uh, characteristics of uh, uh, the uh, understanding or uh, finding out the characteristics of the risk and then having a priority list of the risks and then uh, recommending further analysis or response uh, or uh, watch list. So then we had talked about perform qualitative risk analysis process, what are the inputs, what are the tools and techniques we use and uh, what we get out of it. Uh, so that was what we had discussed uh, in a previous uh, lecture. Now we will uh, move um, uh, to today's lecture and that is about quantitative uh, risk analysis. So uh, we have seen this uh, figure before uh, and uh, over there if you take one tiny uh, bit out of that uh, tower 
what would be the impact now uh, you want to have uh, the exact impact uh, of one pa uh, one um, risk on the overall objectives you want to quantify that so performing um, perform quantitative risk analysis is the process of numerically analyzing the effect of identified risks on overall project objectives perform quantitative risk analysis is performed on risk uh, that have been prioritized by the perform qualitative risk analysis process as potentially and substantially impacting the project's competing demands so is pe upar hum already baat kar chuke hain ke qualitative se teen tarah ki hame jo cheeze hain wo pata chalti hain ek ke humne wo risk jo hain unko further analysis karna hai unka response karna hai design karna hai ya unko filhal watch list mein shamil karna hai so jo risk humne quantitative ke liye liye the unko hum yahan phir leke aayenge aur uska analysis karenge aur numerical analysis karenge so um quantitative risk analysis uh, ke uh, kuch jo inputs hain tool techniques hain aur outputs hain so perform quantitative uh, risk analysis uh, ke jo uh, inputs mein se sabse pehle jo risk register hai aur risk register jo abhi tak aapka ban chuka hai uske andar kuch cheeze jo uh, hain wo wo ye wali hain ke ek to serial number aa chuka hai aapka table ke andar रिस्क टाइटल उसके बाद इसकी कॉज इसकी प्रॉबिलिटी इसका इम्पैक्ट और रैंकिंग और इसके बाद ग्रुपिंग और कैटेगरी और उसके बाद कि किस ऑब्जेक्टिव को ये करता है ऑब्जेक्टिव अच्छा एक रिस्क है एक्स उसकी काज है वाई उसकी प्रोबेबिलिटी हाई उसका इम्पैक्ट है लो उसकी रैंकिंग है मीडियम और कैटेगरी है उसकी लाइक इंजीनियरिंग इंजीनियरिंग रिस्क है और ऑब्जेक्टिव वो कि, किसको कर रहा है वो बेसिकली टाइम को कर रहा है सो ये चीज़ें अभी तक आपने और ये सीरियल नंबर वन आ जाएगा ये चीज़ें अभी तक आपने फाइंड uh, आउट कर चुके हैं अपने रिस्क रजिस्टर के अंदर अब हम इसके अंदर फर्दर कुछ चीज़ें ऐड करने जा रहे हैं कि क्वांटिफिकेशन करने जा रहे हैं तो अब हम इसके अंदर ओके uh, okay, uh, कुछ ऐसी चीज़ें हैं जो फर्दर भी लाइक like, ओनर भी हो सकता है जो आपने इसके बाद स्टेटस uh, भी हो सकता है सो यू कैन एड फ्यू कॉलम्स ओवर देर अगेन सो हैविंग दिस थिंग वी आर हैविंग दिस थिंग विद अस बाय दिस पॉइंट इन टाइम वी हैव कम्प्लीटेड ऑल द प्रोसेस इज अर्लियर सो एंड देन रिस्क मैनेजमेंट प्लान why this risk management what is the difference between risk register and risk management plan so this information is kind of uh, risk uh, uh, risk register okay but now when to start quantitative or uh, with what frequency you want to have quantitative and who will perform the quantitative uh, analysis and what tools or software you will use for the quantitative analysis what resources will be uh, used for the quantitative risk analysis so this information is uh, coming from that part of uh, um, inputs okay so then cost management plan including the estimates the budgets the earned value management everything is part of that so you you want to have that as well now you are going to quantify the thing so you are in need of detailed uh, information about the costing what are the assumptions what are what for the Mm, basis what were the types uh, what were uh, the data quality levels so everything is uh, actually been given over there then schedule management plan similar uh, similar to cost management plan we we want to have information on each and every activity the attributes the durations the uh, relationship type uh, whether the relationship is uh, internal or external or uh soft or hard uh, so whatever uh, that is we want to give it to uh, quantitative risk analysis so that we can carry out the certain analysis and then organizational processes asserts what do we have available with us as far as quantitative risk analysis is concerned do we have uh, very licensed 
uh, software for Monte Carlo simulation or would do we have another uh, Excel based sensitivity analysis sheets or stuff like that. Uh, and then uh, quantitative risk analysis already carried out sim on similar projects on uh, within the organization or outside the organization or uh, do we have um, risk uh, quantitative risk analysis um, maturity in organization. So that is given uh, through that part. Okay. Then uh, we apply tools and techniques uh, and uh, first of all is uh, the most important thing is data gathering and representation techniques. So first we actually gather the data and then we represent, uh, we represent that data. Uh, so we are going to talk about that, how we gather data and how to represent that. So quantitative risk analysis and modeling techniques so uh, we are going to talk on that as well and expert judgment. So these are three tools and techniques which are used as far as perform quantitative uh, risk analysis uh, is concerned. And uh, remember what was the output of uh, plan risk management? Uh, what was uh, that was risk management management plan. RMP. Okay, that is different from risk management professional. Okay, so then what was the output of uh, 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 the second um, um, process that was identify risk and that was uh, identify risk uh, and uh, risk register was the output. Okay, and Okay, so what was the uh, output of uh, uh, quantitative, qualitative, uh, performing qualitative risk analysis? That was updating to this thing, updating to risk uh, register, okay? And similarly for quantitative, we have this risk register available, right? We just have to update. The columns are there, uh, the columns are there. We just have to now fill these columns, okay? So th that will make risk register updates. So that is about performing quantitative risk analysis. And now uh, we will talk, we had talked about the inputs a uh, little bit. Now we will talk in detail about tools and techniques. So as far as ga data gathering uh, is concerned, so we may use different uh, uh, things like questionnaires, like interviews, like um, uh, uh, meetings, like uh, uh, expert interviews or expert judgment and stuff like that. So one very good uh, data collecting uh, technique is interviewing. So interviewing techniques draw on experience and historical data uh, to quantify the probability and impact of risk on project objectives. So uh, we want to quantify the probability and impact of the risk on project objectives. So the information needed depends upon the type of probability distributions that will be used. So uh, whatever the type of distribution, distribution you have uh, decided about uh, will actually contribute uh, towards mm, the type of data you will have. So one uh, very good example is information would be gathered uh, on the optimistic, pessimistic, and most likely scenarios for some commonly used distributions. An example of three point estimates for cost are shown in figure uh, upcoming figure. So we have uh, done this three point example uh, or a beta distribution or part distribution uh, for uh, duration of activities and uh, development of schedule through PERD. And uh, by that time we had talked that this technique can equally be used uh, on cost as well. Now let's have an example over there. So um, uh, we are having this uh, project who is having this, these WBS elements design, build, and test. So if we are having, like, uh, we just uh, take three uh, opinion uh, from uh, different people, okay, what, is, what would be the uh, low value? Uh, one said, okay, uh, four million. The other uh, said, uh, uh, and uh, for design, he said 4 million. The other said 6 million. And uh, the one 
said 10 million. So we are having three values for design, ranging from 4 to 10. So we can have actually a you know, very good idea of uh, uh, what is um, uh, the total uh, cost by using uh, formula. So let's uh, have some calculations, straightforward calculations over there. So if I can uh, add uh, three columns over there. Now I can have a uh, mean value, mean cost, and then I can have uh, expected mean cost, okay, and then I can have a standard deviation, and then I can have variance. So if um, that is the scenario, then uh, uh, most likely is six or so four times six is twenty four. 24, 28, and 38. And for that, uh, 35, 55, 65, and 71. And 23, 28, uh, 38, 39, and 49. So if I go for the standard deviation, uh, uh, so that is wrong. We had to multiply with this thing, OK? So that is 4 times. 20, 80, 80 and 96, 96 and uh, uh, 131 would be the right answer. Okay, and that is also wrong. 4 times 15, 60, 60, 70, 71, 74 and 94. Okay, and what is the standard deviation? Uh, pessimistic minus uh, uh, minus. Uh, uh, optimistic, so 10 minus 4 is uh, 6 by 6, so that is standard deviation 1. So 35 minus 16 is 29, 19 by 6, and uh, we can have 3 point um, like uh, 1, uh, so 4, 1, and then 6. And then uh, 23 minus uh, 11, that is 22. 12 by 6, that is 2. So you you see over there we are having higher standard deviation. So uh, th for that uh, one, okay. Now we can have variance 1 for like 10. So variance is quite high. So if we can add uh, the variance over there, uh, so if we can calculate this is, this comes to be Right. Let's say, uh, let's assume we, j we j are just taking round up, round figures, okay, 6 and um, 2 and let's say 2 and 1 and 6, let's say, okay. So we are taking this variance, 10, 15, 5, 15 and 15 under root, 15 is the total variance, then standard deviation will be 15 under root and that is, let's say, assuming 4, and then uh, we add this thing up, okay? So we are having like mm, 22, uh, 22, 32, and uh, 44. So we are having this 44 plus minus 4. So that is very rough, you know? We are not using any calculator. So that, now, um, what is happening over there? So one body is saying low value is this, most likely the other guy is saying another value for design and another guy is actually giving. So you have uh, uh, extracted this information from an interview. So for three different activities, they have specified three different values. So for uh, low, uh, this uh, shows that the project is, uh, total project is like 31, uh, to 68 and most likely is 41 but our value is suggesting something else and that is 44 plus minus 4 we have uh, used part uh, 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 simulation for doing all this stuff let's say let's see um, now what is the answer over there what should you call this one is answer or this one is answer considering this information both are not the correct answers. Now let's have uh, what the software has done for us after uh, running this simulation, okay? So interview relevant stakeholders helps determine the three-point estimates for each WBS element for triangular, beta, or other distributions. 
In this example, the likelihood of completing the project at or below the most likely estimate of uh, 41 million is relatively small, as shown in this figure. Um, uh, let's see the simulation figures, okay? Okay, so over there we are having this thing, okay? So uh, uh, after putting this data into a, a software, uh, the software has said, okay, the uh, mean value will be 46.67, okay? So um, uh, the, and that is uh, what we have specified was 44 plus minus 4. So that was kind of maximum was 48. And over there, you can say that 47. So we are around about uh, very near to that, OK? This is how we actually uh, do the stuff uh, and collect the data. And then we actually uh, do an, uh, and uh, make some analysis. So then uh, another uh, data gathering technique uh, is uh, probability distribution. So continuous uh, probability distributions uh, used extensively in modeling and simulation represents. So let's have uh, discussed about the, the two terms, modeling and simulation first. Uh, so these concepts are, uh, you know, the, uh, many people, they think of modeling and simulation as a very complex thing. Yes, these are. But you can understand these things with very simple examples. So. Uh, uh, if uh, I can explain in the layman's uh, language, model is nothing else but this. Now oh, that is a model. That's it. Uh, and uh, if you are having other model, maybe a is, is equal to a squared plus uh, b squared plus c squared plus z squared. This is again a model. And uh, anything which is uh, where uh, one variable. Uh, is dependent on other variables. So you can have um, C is equal to 4B plus A. So over there you are having three variables and this variable is dependent on these variables A and B and this is constant. So this is, a, uh, this is quite a model, right? And so that can be as simple as these equations or as complex as uh, network diagram. Okay, and uh, what is simulation? So what uh, what is simulation? Before we go for the simulation, let's have the concept of, we are going to actually talk the, about uh, the bookish uh, definitions in upcoming slides, but before we move to that, I just want to uh, have very good understanding of the things uh, for you people, okay? Okay, uh, so just let me know uh, what is a random number? Just think of any number and uh, write it up. So I'm thinking of this number. Okay, I'm writing this 6, 12, 1 million, 15 lakh, 3, 81, 9. So what I was doing over there? May ye number kahan se aare? Mere dimaag se? Aur uski kya logic hai? I do know, I just want to do that, okay? So these are quite random numbers. I can think of a billion of billion of billion, and I can think of minus a billion of billion of billion, and then minus 36 or 44. So you can have, so if I ask you what is the number in your head, so that may be 12 or 14 or whatever the number. So that is the randomness. So people do exhibit this thing, this uh, correct randomness. But if I ask you, mm, what would be the duration of uh, this uh, lecture or today? So you may have like, okay, uh, one hour to one hour and 10 minutes. Or extreme cases, one hour, 30 minutes. So wh why you've, sa you've said so? Because you people have attended my lectures before, and you do know that uh, my lectures are spanning somewhere. So you are having a very uh, good idea over there. So how much time I take to deliver my one lecture, OK? So um, uh, that, then you can actually put a very good guess uh, out of, uh, you, you won't say like four hours, you won't say like one year because that would be absurd. Now you have put some restriction over your randomness ability. Uh, the producing the numbers out of nowhere, you have put some restriction. So before you can think of that, and now you, you are putting some bars based on your experience. And now you have said that you 
लेक्चर है ये आप कोई भी नंबर दे सकते थे चार साल पांच साल छह साल सात साल बट यू आर डूइंग नॉट यू यू जस्ट सेड वन आवर एंड फ्यू मिनट्स ओके नाउ बेसिकली आपका ये कहां से आया आपके एक्सपीरियंस uh, से आपके पास जो डाटा था या जो आपकी अंडरस्टैंडिंग थी नाउ पुटिंग सम बार एंड हैविंग दिस क्लास अब ये लेक्चर अगर मैं देखूं वन आवर भी इसकी ड्यूरेशन है और वन आवर थर्टी मिनट्स भी है सो so, मिनिमम ये वन आवर का होगा और मैक्सिमम ये वन आवर थर्टी मिनट्स का होगा सो फॉर दैट रेंज इफ आई राइट समथिंग ओवर देयर वन आवर टू वन आवर प्लस थर्टी मिनट्स नो दैट इज अ रेंज सो आई कैन फिनिश नाउ यू हैव टू गैस हाउ मच टाइम आई विल टेक टू फिनिश दिस लेक्चर सो I can finish my lecture in one hour exactly. One hour, one minute. One hour, two minutes. One hour, three minutes. One hour, four minutes. One hour, five minutes. Or one hour, thirty minutes. Or one hour, thirty point five minutes. Or one hour, five minutes, thirty seconds of thirty-five seconds. See, so I can do anything uh, out of it. Okay. So, but you are having this thing. Uh, so simulation is picking up any random number within that class you have specified. So in random numbers, you are just picking the numbers out of a uh, whole universe or out of nowhere. You you are getting out or the numbers and that number is quite okay. But for simulation, you are picking again the random number but within those boundaries. You are not picking 99 min uh, 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 59 minutes. Or uh, one minute less than, or two minute less than one hour, or uh, one forty minutes, because that is outside the uh, range. Now that is simulation. Simulation is nothing else but uh, you know uh, having uh, some data point within defined constraints or different limits you have specified, and that is uh, called uh, simulation. I hope uh, I was able to explain that concept. Uh, if uh, you you find it difficult, I just recommend you to rewind the uh, video and you just uh, have again listen very carefully what I was uh, speaking over there. So, so continuously probability distribution used extensively in modeling and simulation represent the uncertainty in values such as duration of schedule activities and activities and cost of project components. So these distribution depict shapes that are compatible with the data typically developed during the quantitative risk analysis. So uniform distributions uh, can be used only if there is no obvious value that is more likely um, than any other between specified high and low bounds, such as the early concept stage of design. So uh, these are types of distributions we are having. So um, uh, the distribution may be beta distribution and triangular distribution. So when we were actually doing this uh, expected uh, dur uh, activity duration formula is most likely four times most likely plus optimistic plus pessimistic and divided by six and standard deviation is p minus o by six and uh, variance is p minus o square by 36. So you can, mm, you were having these formulas and then you were ha actually showing this thing. This is your uh, uh, type of distribution over there. For that distribution, um, uh, you, you will have uh, other parameters most likely, uh, of this is uh, low value, this is high value and this is most likely value. So these uh, distributions are frequently used in uh, quantitative risk analysis. Now that uh, data shown on figure on the left is one ex uh, example of family of um, such distribution determined by two shape parameters uh, alpha and beta. Other commonly used distribution include the uniform normal and long normal. In these others, uh, the horizontal axis represent possible values of time or cost and the vertical axis represents relative likelihood. So over there that is the probability and over there that is the probable impact or you know cost and time and um, then quantitative risk analysis and modeling techniques there are uh, many available uh, but then um, uh, commonly used techniques include uh, both event oriented and project oriented analysis 
So one of them is sensitivity analysis, other is expected monetary value, EMV. Uh, we, we are going to talk uh, good, in good detail for that. So sensitivity analysis uh, helps to determine which risk have uh, the most potential impact on the project. It examines the extent to which the uncertainty of each project element affects subjective um, being examined when all other uncertain elements are held at their baseline values. So what we do is uh, we are having this model x is equal to y square plus z square and then what we do is we want to have x value we fix z at one value and then we keep changing the values of y and then we see what is the trend of x and uh, we can have what is the impact uh, of uh, y on x by changing the value so this is called sensitivity analysis and expected monetary value analysis uh, uh, is a statistical concept uh, that calculates the average outcome when the future uh, includes scenarios that may or may not happen. Analysis under uncertainty. The EMV of opportunities will generally be expressed as positive value while those of threats will be negative. So we are going to uh, do that. So just hold on and we, we can sit on this definition and we then explain the f uh, things further. And uh, modeling and uh, simulation, yes, that is there. Mm, a project simulation uses a model that translates the specified detailed uncertainties of the project into their potential impact on project objectives. Iterative simulations are typically performed using the Monte Carlo uh, technique. In a simulation, the project model is computed many times iterated with the input values, for example, cost estimates or activity durations chosen at random for each iteration from the probability distribution of these variables. A probability distribution, for example, total cost or completion date is calculated from the iterations. Uh, for a cost risk analysis, a simulation uses cost estimates. Uh, and for schedule risk analysis, the schedule network diagram and duration estimates are used. So this is about simulations. Uh, the concept is very simple, as I've already explained. Uh, now this is uh, just the bookish uh, definition. And again, uh, the other example, we have collected the data. And over there, this was the minimum value, 41. And this was the uh, probable higher value, 68, somewhere. OK, so um, the project is only 12% likely to meet the 41 million. So 41 million, only 10% chances. And uh, for 47 million, uh, that is 47.5, 100%. And 50 million, they are having, again, lesser probability. So, um, uh, so this is the concept. So if you want to have a percentage of uh, uh, probability, you want to have uh, what is the probability, what would be the probability to complete the f uh, project within 20 days or 22 days. We have done one example of this, if you remember. Okay, probabilistic analysis of the project. So if I ask you what, we, what is 1 plus 1, your answer is 2. And 2 plus 3 is 5. And 6 plus 4 is 10. Now these models are uh, kind of deterministic model straightforward. But if we can have a series of values, like, like uh, y is x plus z, and x is having that range of 1, uh, from 1 to 100 and z is having 1 to 1000 and you can collect any uh, any value from 1 to 100 and you can uh, uh, select any other value for cal computation of y so that is probabilistic uh, model okay so estimates are made of potential project schedule and cost outcome uh, listing the possible completion dates and costs with associated confidence levels. This output, often expressed as a cumulative distribution, uh, can be used uh, with stakeholder risk tolerances to permit quantification of the cost and time contingency reserves. Such con contingency reserves are needed to bring the risk of overrunning stated project objectives to a level acceptable to the organization. For instance, in figure above, uh, previous figure, the cost contingency to the 65th percentile is 9 million. 
or about 22 percent when compared to the 40 million dollars some of the most likely estimates shown in figure above so for that if we can have um, uh, 75 percent over there is a over there and that is 50 and that is the difference of this is 9 million which is 22 percent above um, when compared to 41 most likely so um, this is how we do probabilistic analysis of the uh, risks okay uh, now uh, we want to have the probability of achieving cost and time objectives so with the risk facing the project uh, uh, the probability of achieving project objectives under the current plan can be estimated using quantitative risk analysis result for instance in figure above the likelihood of achieving the cost estimate of 41 billion is about 12 percent so over there you can see uh, that is the 12 percent and uh, for um, uh, completing this project within you know, 50 million is 75 percent and uh, what are uh, outputs of uh, quantitative, quantitative uh, risk analysis so we are having um, over there that is uh, correct it it is quantitative okay quantitative risk analysis so prioritized list of uh, quantified risks uh, so this list uh, list of risk includes those that pose the greatest threat or pre uh, present the greatest opportunity you know, to the project these include the risk that may have the greatest effect on the cost contingency and those that uh, are most likely to influence the critical path these risks may be identified in some cases through our tornadoes diagram generated as a result of the simulation analysis so what is tornado diagram tornado diagram is nothing else but the uh, graphical representation of the sensitivity analysis so um, over there this is uh, threat over there this is opportunity so um, so this this is one risk this is two this is three this is four this is risk number five and six so risk one is having threat but uh, risk number uh, five is very uh, very uh, one with having more uh, uh, you know effect on objectives so risk number three is having the second or risk number one is the third and risk number two is the uh, fourth one uh, as far as threats are concerned so we are having this ranking of the risks and then opportunity risks uh, risk number six is more uh, presenting more opportunities and risk number four is uh, presenting uh, lesser opportunities so this type of representation in graphical form is called uh, tornado uh, charts or diagram so that is also uh, generated as a result of simulation analysis through sensitivity analysis okay and uh, again we have to change that um, this is quantitative quantitative right so change that okay so uh, quantitative um, trends in quantitative risk analysis results so one of the output may be mm, uh, the mm, uh, uh, what is the quantitative risk uh, results okay we had talked about this uh, that um, uh, there would be uh, you know um, some um, kind of uh, uh, frequency like uh, we do want to identify the risk first and uh, then we want to analyze those uh, but uh, when should we start identifying so first thing is as early as possible so uske baad ruk jana chahiye nahi uske baad hame phir identification karne chahiye so ek to hai early identification hai aur ek hai ki aap iterative identification karte hain aur phir aap provisions rakhte hain emergent identification ki so ye jo sari cheeze hain ye frequency ye kab karenge aap identification jo aapne kaha na iterative to ye aapne faisla kiya hua hai iski repetition ka uh, uh, risk management plan ke andar 
प्लान रिस्क मैनेजमेंट के अंदर आप डिसाइड कर रहे थे अगर आपको याद हो अगर आप स्लाइड देखें कि उसमें हमने बात की थी कि फ्रिक्वेंसी हम डिसाइड करेंगे तो जो आइडेंटिफाई करने की फ्रिक्वेंसी वो एक होगी क्वालिटेटिव रिस्क एनालिसिस की फ्रिक्वेंसी दूसरी होगी क्वांटिटेटिव रिस्क एनालिसिस की फ्रिक्वेंसी तीसरी होगी मतलब कोई मुख्तलिफ हो सकती है अज्यूम करें कि हम हर हफ्ते के बाद रिस्क आइडेंटिफाई करते हैं और हर दो हफ्ते के बाद हम क्वालिटेटिव रिस्क एनालिसिस करते हैं और हर चार हफ्ते के बाद हम क्वान्टिटेटिव रिस्क एनालिसिस करते हैं अब आपका प्रोजेक्ट है बारह महीने का सात महीने गुजर चुके हैं तो कितनी दफा आपने क्वान्टिटेटिव रिस्क एनालिसिस कर लिया होगा लाइक आठ दफा एक दफा स्टार्ट में और फिर सात के बाद तो अब आप आठ दफा जो रिस्क एनालिसिस आपने किया अब होगा क्या कि शुरू में आपके पास इन्फॉर्मेशन नहीं थी अब आपके पास इन्फॉर्मेशन बढ़ रही है जैसे जैसे इन्फॉर्मेशन बढ़ती जाती है चीजें क्लियर होती जाती हैं। वो इस इन्फॉर्मेशन के बढ़ने से जो रिस्क पहले बहुत हाई था वो हो सकता है लो हो गया हो एक बिल्कुल लो रिस्क हो सकता है वो हाई पे चला गया हो तो ये एक ट्रेंड आपके पास आ जाएगा ये जो ट्रेंड है ये बेसिकली आपको फ्यूचर के अंदर आपकी क्वान्टिटेटिव रिस्क एनालिसिस करने की एबिलिटी को बढ़ाता है so as the analysis is repeated our trend may become apparent that leads to conclusions affecting risk responses organizational historic information on project schedule cost quality and performance should reflect new insights uh, gained through the perform quantitative risk analysis process such history may take the form of quantitative risk analysis report now we have uh, completed this thing and um, let's start with the some practical things okay so uh, risk analysis is um, quantification uh, includes selecting the most severe risk from the prioritized identified list and then undertaking further decomposition analysis uh, and we are going to do that jab humne qualitative se jo le liya pehle to identify kiya usko fir qualitative analysis kiya ab usko humne further decompose karke uska quantitative karna hai when all identified risks have been scored using a qualitative model then individual risk can be selected from a ranked list for more detailed analysis and uh, for more detailed analysis what do you mean by one uh, characteristic that is probability and impact yes duration that may be can, may be there but we are not going to use this but we will talk on that as well so the task here is to assess quanti quantitatively in some way the three components of each risk probability of occurrence of the risk event the magnitude of the impact of the risk event if it should occur and the period during which the risk will be live when the risk uh, taker uh, will be at risk um and uh, as far as probability is concerned uh, how do we assess the probability so we are going to uh, uh, use three ways these are objectively uh, determining uh, probabilities uh probability determined uh, probabilities and subjective de determined uh, pr uh probabilities so we are going to talk about objectively so let's take one very good example of uh, uh this thing so assume you are responsible uh, for a train scheduling project and you need to plan the peak hour frequency for a suburban train line historic records are available to provide data on peak hour passenger loads for the line and you have uh, data on the approximate number of passengers arriving at the terminal on each of 21 occasions so what you have you are having 21 data points and one ek dafa jo train aayi to uske andar 800 common se lekin 900 tak log the 801 se 850 wale incidents do the तीन दफा जब ट्रेन आई तो उसके अंदर 700 सौ कामन से लेके 800 लोग थे सात दफा जब ट्रेन आई 701 से लेके 750 थे चार दफा वो था जब 600 सौ कामन से लेके 700 थे और तीन दफा 601 से 650 थे और एक दफा ट्रेन के अंदर जो लोग आए वो 600 से भी कम थे अभी इक्कीस दफा का डाटा आपके पास है अगर आप इसको प्लॉट कर लें अब प्लॉट कैसे करेंगे ओवर देर सो नंबर ऑफ अकेजेंस फ्रिक्वेंसी है इस साइड पे मसलन अगर हम देखें कि थ्री टाइम्स सात सौ इक्यावन से आठ सौ अब सात सौ इक्यावन से सात सौ इक्यावन से आठ सौ वाली जो है सात सौ इक्यावन से लेकर के आठ सौ वाली ये वाली ओके दैट इज सात सौ इक्यावन से आठ सौ से कम और सात सौ इक्यावन से ज्यादा सो दैट इज इसकी अगर आप फ्रिक्वेंसी देखें थ्री इस तरह सात सौ एक से सात सौ पचास सात सौ एक से सात सौ पचास की फ्रिक्वेंसी सात 
राइट सो वी हैव ड्रॉन दिस अगर आप इसको जरा गौर से देखें तो आपको पता चलेगा ये एक नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन है नॉर्मल राइट बीटा डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन अगर होती तो वो ऐसे की होती सम समथिंग लाइक दैट पर्ड की होती और या ट्राइंगुलर होती तो वैसे होती लेकिन ये जो है ना मोर लेस आपकी बेसिकली एक सिग्मा सा दैट इज कॉल्ड नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ओके सो दैट इज फ्रीक्वेंसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इफ यू कैन हैव अ गुड लुक ऑफ दैट थिंग ओके and then uh, now convert this frequency distribution curve into cumulative frequency distribution plot by adding the stacks successively ab humne kya kiya ke jo to the pehle hamari jo frequency thi like uh, agar hum baat kare 900 se uh, zyada ki aur phir uh, 900 se lekar ke 850 tak phir 800 se leke 850 tak phir सात सौ पचास से 800 तक फिर 700 से लेके 750 तक ये हमारी क्लासेस थी राइट और इनकी आगे फ्रीक्वेंसी दी हुई थी लाइक तीन चार पाँच दो ठीक है अब हम क्या कर रहे हैं कि इनकी फ्रीक्वेंसीज को ऐड कर रहे हैं इसकी फ्रीक्वेंसी को हमने ऐड इसका रखेंगे टू और इसको क्या करेंगे टू प्लस थ्री फाइव इसको हम इस तरह हम सबको सक्सेसिव एड करेंगे तो जो हमारी छः से कम की है वो एक ही दफा आई थी तो उसका आएगा वन जो 650 से कम दफा आया तो अब क्या होगा 600 से कम जो आई वो भी और जो 650 से कम आई वो भी तो अभी हम जाके डाटा देखते हैं हमारे पास डाटा क्या है ये देखें जी जो 600 से कम थी एक दफा और जो 650 से कम वो तीन दफा तो ये हमारा जो आप क्या आ जाएगा वन प्लस थ्री चार तो ये हम जी चार यहां ये चार जो है हमने यहाँ ड्रॉ कर दिया फोर ओवर थ्री सिमिलरली अगला जो आ गया वो लाइक आठ आ गया पंद्रह फिर अठारह फिर बीस और फिर आपके इक्कीस सो टोटल आपके इक्कीस है सो दैट इज हर दफा अगर आप सब नौ सौ से कम जितने आए वो तो इक्कीस दफा नौ सौ से कम ही आए नौ सौ से ऊपर तो कोई नहीं गया अच्छा आठ सौ पचास से कितने कम आए माइनस कर लें टोटल 850 से नीचे वाले कितने हैं और 850 से ऊपर वाले कितने हैं इनको अगर माइनस कर लें तो आपके पास ये आ जाएगा 850 से कम वाले कितने हैं सो so, ये आपने कर लिया अब इसके ऊपर आप कर लें देन कन्वर्ट दैट इनटू परसेंटेज कम्युलेटिव फ्रीक्वेंसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन अब आप इसको परसेंटेज में कन्वर्ट कर दें सो so, अगर मैं इसको लू तो ये है जनाब टोटल ट्वेंटी है सो so, ये है वन सो so, इसकी क्या परसेंटेज बन जाएगी वन बाई ट्वेंटी वन इंटू हंड्रेड दैट विल बी दर्सेंटेज ऑफ दिस और इसकी कितनी परसेंटेज बन जाएगी इसकी बन जाएगी ट्वेंटी वन डिवाइडेड बाई ट्वेंटी वन इन टू हंड्रेड एंड दैट इज हंड्रेड परसेंट और इसकी कितनी बन जाएगी लेट से हम एक और लेते हैं इसकी फिफ्टीन बाई ट्वेंटी वन इन टू हंड्रेड सो दैट विल बी दर्सेंटेज ऑफ दिस नो कन्वर्ट दैट थिंग इन टू परसेंटेज जब आप परसेंटेज में करते हैं तो अकॉर्डिंगली आपका इस तरह के ग्राफ और ये आ जाते हैं और इस साइड पे आप देखें परसेंटेज आ गई है पहले यहां फ्रीक्वेंसी आ रही थी अब परसेंटेज आ गई अगर आप इसके अंदर से इस तरह की एक लाइन गुजारे हैं टॉप के ऊपर से सो दैट इज कॉल्ड प्रोबेबिलिटी डेंसिटी फंक्शन कर्व ये जो ग्राफ है इसको कहते हैं प्रोबेबिलिटी डेंसिटी फंक्शन अ कर्व कैन बी फिटेड टू रीस रिजल्टिंग प्लॉट टू क्रिएट अ प्रोबेबिलिटी डेंसिटी फंक्शन कर्व ये जी आपकी वो लाइन लग गई और अब आपके पास ये वाली चीज आ गई सो दिस कर्व अलाउज यू टू मेयर द प्रोबेबिलिटी एसोसिएटेड विद एनी ऑफ द पैसेंजर लोड रेट्स चोजन फॉर द शेड्यूलिंग एक्सरसाइज सो सपोज यू डिसाइड यू डिसाइड दैट एन अप्रोप्रिएट रेट वुड बी 850 फिफ्टी पैसेंजर पर ट्रेन तो क्या उसकी प्रॉबिलिटी होगी आप 850 पे चले जाए एटी फाइव पचानवे परसेंट ये प्रोबेबिलिटी होगी कि आपकी पैसेंजर 850 से कम होंगे और 5 परसेंट प्रोबेबिलिटी होगी कि वो पैसेंजर जो हैं वो उससे ज्यादा होंगे अगर आपको ये फाइंड आउट करना हो कि 50 परसेंट प्रोबेबिलिटी किस चीज की है तो 50 परसेंट प्रोबेबिलिटी है जी वो यहां आ रही है 50 परसेंट प्रोबेबिलिटी होगी कि आपके पैसेंजर जो है वो लेट से सात से ज्यादा होंगे so uh, this is how we actually do calculate the stuff so uh, this is, has been explained over there so while we have actually said is that there is a 95% chance uh, that the passenger loads will be 850 or um, less per train 
we have not examined uh, the relative risk at more specific loads. So that's, there is a 10% chance of the actual load being between 800 and 850 passengers per train. Then there is a 5%, um, okay, okay, so over there. So we are having 800, 850, and so we are having 10%. Uh, uh, chances that uh, the people will be a from 850 to 800, okay? Or a 15% chance of the load being between 800 and 750 passengers, 85 minus 70, and uh, so this is it. So this information allows us to make decisions about scheduling the trains with information about the risk of making wrong decisions. The probabilities are statistically reduced from the objectives observation, hence it's called objectively determined uh, pro probabilities. So objective uh, probabilities for risk management are established by calculation from previous similar risk events. The insurance industry uses that uh, and the objective method requires large number of historical cases to establish reliable probabilities. So my question is, uh, how practical is uh, the use of objective probabilities in your organization at, or your workplace? Do think of that and have your answer with you. Can, do you, want, uh, can you or should you use such type of probabilities prediction? And uh, then there is a second method that, that is called the priori. So a priori probability for risk management are established by assigning prior known probabilities taken from other contexts. So using a six-sided dive, what is the chance of throwing a six? So that is one by six. Uh, so we do know that there, are, there is maximum six and minimum one. So one by six, uh, there is one chance uh, there, uh, there is one chance that six will come, okay? So there is one chance that one will come, there are v one chance that two will come, or there is uh, one chance that three will come. So the probability is 16.67%. So what is the probability of throwing a number uh, greater than three in a single throw? So uh, greater than three ka matlab hai ki char aje, okay? Char aje, paanch aje, che aje. Ab aapke total kitni probabilities ho sakti hai? आपके छह हो सकती हैं एक दो तीन चार पांच छह इनमें से कोई भी आ सकता है आपका एक भी आ सकता है अगर आप डाइस फेंके तो आपका एक भी आ सकता है दो भी आ सकता है तीन भी आ सकता है चार भी आ सकता है पांच भी आ सकता है छह भी आ सकता है तो ये टोटल क्लास आपकी छह की है सो सिक्स इज द टोटल आंसर अब ग्रेटर देन तीन का आपको पूछा गया तो वो क्या है चार पांच छ तो तीन है तीन चांसेस हैं आपके पास के आपके ग्रेटर दें तीन आ जाए टोटल कितना है छः थ्री बाय सिक्स विल बी द आंसर एंड दैट इज़ वन बाय टू सो वन बाय सिक्स इज़ फॉर फोर वन बाय सिक्स फॉर फाइव वन बाय सिक्स फॉर सिक्स ओके सो दैट थ्री आर ग्रेटर दें सो दैट इज़ दैट मींस वन बाय टू दैट मीन फिफ्टी परसेंट इ if I bet on two horses in six horse race, then the probability of my winning when each horse has an equal chance of winning, so छः गोड़े दौड़ रहे हैं, ठीक है, और छः में मैंने दो के ऊपर bet किया, तो अगर एक की एक की probability थी one by six, और दूसरे की भी probability equal है, तो मैं करूँगा one by six, अगर मैं इन दोनों को add कर लूँ, तो I I got thirty four, so मेरे chances कितने हैं thirty four percent so compound probability occurs where a number of independent events can occur together. For example, if I bet on two separate races such that if the first horse wins, then the winning are placed on the horse in the second race, then the probability of winning is for that, जो पहला केस था उसमें हमने probabilities को add किया था, compound joint probability के अंदर, और compound के अंदर हम उनको multiply करते हैं. So 1 by 6 multiplied by 1 by 6 is 0.028 तो अब मेरी प्रोबेबिलिटी कितनी रह गई है 2.8 परसेंट और उसमें कितनी थी 0.3 34 परसेंट इसमें मेरे जीतने की प्रोबेबिलिटी क्योंकि अब ये दो गोड़े हैं मेरे चांसेस ज्यादा हैं एक ही रेस के अंदर मैंने लगाए हुए हैं पैसे लेकिन अगर मैं दूसरे रेस में लगा लेता हूं पहले इसके ऊपर बैट करता हूं और फिर दूसरे के ऊपर ये जीतेगा वो पैसे जो आएंगे वो मैं लगाऊंगा तो मेरे चांसेस जो है वो ज्यादा कम हो जाएंगे 
So the probability is lower because winning on the second horse is dependent on winning on the first horse. So um, that is called. Uh, so assume that your company owns four items of equipment. Assume there is a 10% a priori chance of any piece of equipment breaking down during the year. What is the chance of all four items breaking down at the same time? So you 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 want to have compound uh, probability. So 0.1.1.1.1 is uh, like uh, uh, 0 0.001. One chance in ten thousand. कि सारे टूटते हैं। एक टूटने का अगर दस परसेंट चांस था और चार ही टूटने का और अगर मैं पूछूं दो टूटने का कितना चांस होगा तो point one into point one that is point double zero one. So one in thousand. So the result is if note the result if poor maintenance policies increase the single breakdown chance to thirty percent. So अगर आपके बढ़ने के चांस एक के तीस परसेंट हो जाएं दस से तो फिर क्या फर्क पड़ेगा? फिर यही आपका पॉइंट डबल जीरो ट्रिपल जीरो और फिर ये भी बढ़ जाएगा और ये हो जाएगा जीरो नाइन समथिंग लाइक दैट ओके एटी वन एटी वन ऑलमोस्ट वन इन हंड्रेड क्योंकि आपके अब जो पहले दस परसेंट चांस थे अब आपके वो थर्टी परसेंट हो गए तो वो प्रोबेबिलिटी अब उसकी इंक्रीज हो जाएगी अज्यूम दैट द चांस ऑफ वन आइटम ब्रेकिंग डाउन ड्यूरिंग द ईयर इज स्टिल टेन Assume that you have most likely and worst case repair estimate for breakdowns to each of the four items of equipment. The probability of the worst case occurring has been assigned a priority to each item based on throwing a die to choose either 0.05 or 0.1. So uh, that is um, uh, most likely value, and that is uh, most likely equipment for equipment scale is most likely. Or you have priority in case of assign ki 0.05 ki. So worst case scenario, and uh, then um, uh, this is 0.1, and this is 0.5, and this is 0.10. You have assigned uh, priority. So this is how uh, we actually uh, assign the priority uh, of uh, priority probabilities uh, over there. So what is the chance if equipment one breaks and equipment two will also break down? So now what you have to do is that this will break and this will break. So what will happen? 0.05 into 0.1. फाइव चांसेस इन अ थाउजेंड तो आप आप इन दोनों को आपस में इनकी प्रॉरी को मल्टीप्लाई कर रहे हैं कंपाउंडिंग ओके सो दिस इज अबाउट प्रॉरी प्रॉबेबिलिटीज हाउ प्रैक्टिकल आर दिस एस फॉर एस योर वर्कप्लेस इज कंसर्न डू यू हैव ऑल द डाटा यू सिंपली जस्ट वांट टू यूज़ द प्रॉरी प्रॉबेबिलिटीज सो that's it and we have uh, completed today's uh, lecture and I hope we've uh, learned uh, new things. Uh, so in this lecture we have talked about quantitative risk analysis, uh, quantitative risk analysis processes, uh, probability distributions, sensitivity analysis, modeling and simulation, monetary value analysis, just definition, objectively determined probability and a priori probability. So, uh, uh, this is uh, the end note of uh, today's class and that speaks uh, speak when you are angry and you will make the best speech uh, you will ever regret. Uh, so I say thank you, good luck and Allah Hafiz.